This is the Galaxy Z Fold 4. It's the fourth version of Samsung's phone that folds open into a small tablet. It costs $1,800. Yes, that's $1,800, AKA a lot of gravy. Now, most of that price is because of this, a screen that folds in half but it's also a screen that you can write and draw on, one that has a high refresh rate for playing video games, and one that even has a clever camera behind it for video calls. And yet, despite not being a huge fan of Galaxy Fold phones, I cannot get enough of the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is my in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. I've had a review sample on loan from Samsung, for two weeks and we'll cover the design changes, the screen improvements, the new cameras, processor and software, and so much more. I know that's a lot, but yeah, so is the Z Fold 4. Chapters are enabled in the description, so peruse around the video at your will. Also, we got some links in there, so you could check out the Z Fold 4 for yourself. Now that all the housekeeping is out of the way, let's fold. Remember the first time you had a crush? I mean, maybe you didn't even know what a crush was, but you found yourself enamored with someone else. That's kind of what has happened to me with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. And like a kid with their first crush, it's hard to describe why I'm so drawn to this phone, especially since the Fold 4 is so similar to last year's Fold 3, which I liked, but uh, <laughs> I was not crazy about that phone. Now, maybe part of my infatuation with the Fold 4 comes from the dozens of small ways it's a refinement over the Fold 3. The hinge is a little thinner. The phone is a little lighter. The bezels on the cover screen are a little smaller. The phone's a little wider, making it more enjoyable to use when closed. Everything about the Fold 4 feels more tailored. And as far as foldable phone tropes go, let me address the two biggest ones right off the bat. Yes, you can see and feel the crease. And no, it doesn't bother me. Do I wish there wasn't a crease? Of course. Does Samsung? I'm willing to bet they do too. But when I use the Fold 4, I'm usually head on with the display and the crease is not this glaring scarlet letter. Now, the other trope is that the Fold 4 is too expensive for what you get. Yes, I could buy a Galaxy S22 Ultra and an iPad mini for the same price, but neither of those devices can do this or this. The core of the Galaxy Fold is its hinge. It enables the phone to fold open and close, and the hinge on the Fold 4 is slimmer than the one on the Fold 3. It feels firm and is satisfying to close. I mean, just listen to that sound. Because of the phone's size and the firm hinge, this isn't like the Galaxy Z Flip where you can open and close it with one hand. Now, combine that hinge with aluminum sides and Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, and the phone feels solid, more so than any other foldable phone I've tested. And the hinge enables really great and unique use cases, like being a little tiny stand for watching films and videos, like on an airplane, or its own tripod for capturing photos and videos. It's three millimeters wider than last year's Fold 3, which makes it feel less awkward and cumbersome when it's folded closed in phone mode. Though the on-screen keyboard is still a little cramped for my hands. The Fold 4 is packed with features, ranging from significant ones like the taskbar turned dock that I truly enjoy, to features that are, well, more, oh, well, that seems kind of fun, but will I ever use that? Like the new cursor and trackpad in flex mode. All of these features are enabled by Android 12L, which is optimized for large screens and foldables. 12L and Samsung's lovely tweaks to One UI, uh, Samsung's window dressing for Android, really make you feel like you're using something, well, special, but without necessarily compromising the capabilities that you expect and require from a regular phone that doesn't fold in half. 
The dock at the bottom makes getting in and out of multitasking apps super easy. I mean, you just drag one on top of the other. It's straightforward, it's simple to understand, and it makes using multiple apps at the same time kind of fun. And it's this ease of use that's just another reason that the Fold 4 is so appealing to me. Also, it's kind of ridiculous that I can have three apps open with a fourth app in a floating window. Though in my time, I usually just have one or two apps open at the same time. And by the way, if you wanna have the ultimate time drain, use the Fold 4, have TikTok and Instagram open side by side. One of my favorite things to do with the Fold 4 is watch videos. Now, some of that might be because I caught COVID while reviewing the phone, but I dig that if I close the Fold while I'm watching a video, it picks up instantly on the cover screen and vice versa. Now, some of these features are on by default, but other software features are buried in settings under something called labs. Uh, and I very unscientifically turned everything on in the labs tab and have been the happier for it. But not all apps are optimized for the Fold 4. For example, Instagram awkwardly floats in the middle of the screen. There are arrows on either side to align it to the left or right side. Then there's flex mode. When the Fold is positioned half open like a, a mini laptop, it moves the app from the middle of the screen to the top of the screen, but keeps the controls at the bottom. Now, Samsung has improved flex mode, including its gallery app. So now when you edit a photo in flex mode, the picture stays on the top half of the screen and the edit tools and interface on the bottom, as opposed to previous folds and flips where when you edited, the photo would go to the middle of the screen and it was just awkward and weird. The Fold 4 brings a new addition to flex mode and that's the ability to make the bottom of the screen into a mini trackpad, complete with a cursor on the top of the screen. Now I can't say I found a lot of use with this setup, but I, I love that Samsung's embracing the Fold's unique form factor and Look, hey, more of this, please. The Fold 4 supports the S Pen. It, look, it's fun to use, but I wish it magnetically attached to the side of the Fold, kind of like the Apple Pencil does on the iPad. The Fold 4 has five cameras. Now on the back cover, there are three, a main camera with a wide angle lens, another one with an ultra wide angle lens, and a third one with a three times telephoto lens. There's a selfie camera on the cover screen and a camera under the main display. The under display camera is the one I use the least, which is probably the case for a lot of people. And that's why Samsung put it hidden behind the display. Now, you can see where the under display camera is. It's not invisible, like a two-way mirror kind of thing, but it's not as distracting as having a hole punch cutout or a notch. I use the under display camera a couple of times for video chats and no one on these calls noticed anything out of the ordinary. But if I'm being honest, I found the image looked a little flat and processed. The main and telephoto cameras on the back are similar to the ones on the Galaxy S22 Plus. Photos look good and have punchy colors and contrast. These cameras are definitely a step up from the ones on the Fold 3, but they lag behind the cameras on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the Pixel 6 Pro, and iPhone 13 Pro. The only times I noticed the phone struggle was under low or mixed lighting. Though, I gotta say, night mode was pretty great on the Fold 4. In terms of video, image quality was good, but again, in low lighting, things would look a little muddy. And unless you're J.J. Abrams, you're not gonna like all the lens flares. It gets a lot. Take a look at some photos and videos I shot with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. The best part of the cameras on the Fold 4 are the fact that they're on the Fold 4. This phone is its own tripod. You could put it in all sorts of places. And one of the coolest features is the ability to use the rear cameras for selfies or share a preview of the camera's viewfinder on the cover screen with your subject. The Fold 4 has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus chip. It's the fastest processor on any Samsung phone. It's also the same one that we see on a lot of gaming phones. 
And speaking of gaming, the Fold 4 is the perfect size for having an amazing gaming experience. The screen is immersive, and the Fold didn't have any problems handling any of the games I played, like Mario Kart or Genshin Impact or PUBG Mobile. And the speedy processor and the high refresh rate display aren't just good for games. Animations look incredibly butter smooth. Check out the animation for when I pull up and down the notifications shade. Look, I, I know I'm a little insane for calling out this mundane thing, but it's one of the reasons I like this phone so much. In terms of the battery, it's the same size as the one on the full three, which was just okay. I was hopeful that the combination of Android 12L and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus processor would mean that I got more battery life, and to an extent I did, but it was just a little bit more. The Fold was able to make it through most days on a single charge, but sometimes I found myself needing to top it off around eight or nine o'clock at night. I ran a test where over 45 minutes I watched YouTube videos, then scrolled through my TikTok feed, then played Mario Kart, PUBG Mobile, and FIFA Mobile. It's my job, but the point is over 45 minutes, the battery went from 100% to 82%. Obviously, battery life is gonna be different for everyone, and since the Fold 4 has two screens, battery life can vary even more. There was a stretch when I primarily used the cover display and the Fold 4 was able to make it through a day and a half on a single charge. Luckily, charging is peppy though. It's not as fast as something like the OnePlus 10 Pro. I charged the Fold 4 for 30 minutes and the battery went from 20% up to 73%. And uh, remember, the Fold 4 does not come with a wall charger. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 adds all of the nuance and refinement that the Fold 3 needed. But if you have a Fold 3, I don't think there's a reason to upgrade to the 4. Unless money is not an issue for you, then congrats, you're rich. But if you have a Fold 2, it might be worth upgrading, especially if you can score a sweet trade-in deal. You get a better processor, better build, waterproofing, though the Fold 4 still lacks dust resistance, S-Pin support, and better cameras. As for me, well, I hope my infatuation with the Fold 4 lasts. Look, only time will tell. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 is Samsung's best take on a foldable tablet. In fact, I'd say it's my favorite Android tablet, period. The engineering and software improvements are impressive and also indicate that we're just at the dawn of foldable phones. And now, I wanna hear from you. Are you considering getting a Galaxy Z Fold 4? And if so, what to you is appealing about it? And are there questions you have? Throw your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you wanna know more about this phone, check out the description and there's a link to my full written review on CNET. Last, do all the YouTube things, like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.